you know, if you use your smartphone to wake yourself up before you go to class, can you just stay up? The others put your down if you use your smartphone. Okay, how about I use my smartphone to make transfer? All right, I'm done. Okay, how many of us use our smartphones to take pictures? If you do, you can put on the light now. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. With that little exercise, you already have one of the tiniest materials that holds the concept of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? A very small smartphone can change a lot in our lives. It is simply making machines do what humans do on an intelligent level. So, look at it this way. It is making one brain do what the other brain does. So there's you and there's something that thinks just like you to carry out tasks just like you and then to carry out events just like you. Now, the concept of artificial intelligence has the two subsets, machine learning and deep learning. In the, previous, in the previous years, we had machine learning that just uses tasks and modules to carry out events and solutions and bring it to our doorsteps or to the, to the scenarios we are making a program for. But after some time, scientists discovered deep learning. Deep learning is different. It does not use zeros and ones. It goes beyond zeros and ones. He uses the data that is picked around in the environment to make solutions for that particular case story. As we move on, we can see that there has been a timeline of artificial intelligence. In the previous years, it was just simply testing what machines could do on its own. Simply calling the word robot and then moving on to robotics. And then in 1997, there was a program that was built to beat the World Chess Champion. And this program did it accurately well, as it surprised us humans, carrying on what we do normally as humans on an intelligent level. Now, some years later, or some years before that, Stanford had built a prototype of what our autonomous vehicles would look like. And then fast forward so many years later, we have Uber coming up with autonomous vehicles and then drivers, of course, losing their jobs and then the cities are getting to know that we could have cars that can direct themselves, avoid accidents and do a lot much better than we humans could do. Now, sooner, in 2015, there is this game called Go. It is much difficult than the normal chess we all know. Go uses a lot of mathematical computations to, for the person to win. Now, a program was created in Google, and this program beat the world gold champion. Again, from chess, it beat the world gold champion. Now, if you can imagine, the little tasks that demanded our intelligence we are now taken over by robots. Now, most of us here lifted up our phones. That means that you have once upon a time used, maybe you use an Android phone, you use Google Voice, and you say, hey, set a reminder for me. Or you use Google Translate to say, I want to know what the meaning of this word is in Chinese. What the meaning of this word is in, let's say, Turkish language, for instance. If you have done that, you're already using the to operate in an artificially intelligent manner. Now, you can see the guy over there is already enjoying his autonomous vehicle. He just steps in and then there's a smooth ride home. He doesn't need to say anything, he just says, take me home or take me to the office and he takes him home. Probably you have this Siri that you use most time as a personal assistant. It goes from speech recognition and now it's now an assistant with you. You say, tell me a joke, it tries to crack a joke for you. Now, if you have ordered online using Amazon or any of the big companies, chances are you made somebody lose his or her job. That person was working in the inventory. And then these big companies check and say, hey, 
We can get robots to do this for us. They can manage the inventory better. They can put everything in better uh, data categories for us. They can make us deliver better. And then they say, okay, let's lay off some people. The point I'm bringing to us today is, as time and time evolves, we find out that machines are beginning to take on the task that demands our intelligence. Now, there are two categories of people here. One is the IBM Watson, and then the other bull. If you know it, if you're in the financial market, you must have heard of Wall Street. Now, Wall Street is a, a, a wonderful place where a lot of transactions happen. But sooner or later, the people in Wall Street are going to need artificial intelligence for accurate predictions and precise predictions of their future earnings. Now, IBM Watson is a program designed by IBM. It's going to help a lot of companies organize data the way that they want data to be organized. And it's going to help them solve problems within the company. Now, not just machine learning, but deep learning it takes this data from different companies, even from newspaper, it's an online thing, and then it manages you to give the company a full report, a real-time report about their next steps and their next solutions to the cases they have in their company. Now, sooner, you know, Hollywood has a way of telling us things and then presents artificial intelligence to us, thinking that we are going to be attacked by robots. But that's not the case. The case is actually this. The tasks are going to be modified and we are going to have a better society. It's not going to be something that just only puts jobs away, but it's going to make the societies a better one. Think about it this way. We're going to have robots that do better analysis of what surgery should be, of how cancer should be treated, and, and of how the brain should work. We're going to have robots that do better medical research in the medical field. As we look at all this, Gradually, we are evolving into a society where everything around us is going to be operated on the basis of artificial intelligence. Now, the question is, what is the stake for you and I who go to school and our tasks are being replaced by these machines? Our tasks are being collected or being done by these machines, probably to better our lives. How do we come to a point where people become AI-friendly and not scared and say, hey, we've lost all the jobs. How do we get to that point? It's very simple. There are two kinds of knowledge. There is the explicit knowledge and there is the tacit knowledge. The explicit knowledge is the one we already know in school. There are documented theories. We read our books, we read our slides, and then we write an exam, and then we pass them. But the tacit knowledge is different. The tacit knowledge is the skill that is unique to you and you alone but by experience. Now, whether we like it or not, we're going to have a digital divide. There are, there are going to be those who understand programming or those who understand how artificial intelligence works. And there are going to be those who know nothing about this. Whether they like it or not, we are moving into a society that demands that everybody comes on board. Just the same way the pieces came and there was an evolution, that's how the, the artificial intelligence is coming and there's going to be an evolution. Now, what do we do? Here's my advice. That the major jobs don't just become taught in an explicit manner, but that every major job hopping around these ones listed here, just a few, are taught in a passive manner, where people are taken from the explicit and placed in environments where they can learn by experience and know by experience. This way, you are making people not just employable, but we're making them ready to operate in AI environments. As individuals, you want to move from just learning the normal science and then begin to study science courses that are revolving around artificial intelligence, not just computer science like we all want people to learn these days, learn how to operate a computer, learn how to present a slide, learn how to do this and do that, but you want your profession to hover around artificial intelligence. Now, you want to pay attention to the skills that lie within you. As a leader, you want to pay attention to your empathy because no robot is going to be able to show empathy. You want to pay, you want to pay attention to your intellectual capa capability and your creativity. 
no robot can do it the way you can do it. It can only say, oh, we can do this. It's good at analyzing data, it's good at making solutions and predictions, but you cannot do it the way we humans do it. And then you also want to pay attention to your, not just the technical skills, but the team leadership, because in the future, there will be those robots who are going to go into the inventory and take down those jobs. Now, if you are an economist, get ready, because the companies are going to need faster machines that do that job. If you are a financial analyst, get ready. How do you prepare for a society that does not just demand that you know computer science, but that you know how to work with this robot? You have to make sure that the brain that you have is a mix of not just the explicit skills, but the passive skills. You move from knowing the theory of A's and B's and C's and hypothesis in the class and get to a point where your skills in singing, your skills in playing instruments, your skills in knowing something better than a machine is properly arranged. As an academic institution, we should pay more attention to making research in passive skills of individuals within our community. As a government, the government should pay more attention to creating hubs where people come together to not just only learn about computer science and other professions, but try to embed them in a society or in a system where artificial intelligence helps them make the work, helps them carry out their job, and also helps them make a living. If you want to prepare for the future, my advice to you is this. Move be from the point of your explicit knowledge and tap into the passive knowledge. Take your explicit knowledge, hover it around artificial intelligence. If you cannot do that, just make sure that you have skills that go beyond the intelligence of the robots and the machines. I hope this has sparked you up and I hope that you're prepared for the future. Thank you.